Hey folks, wanted to do a quick book review for you, or more a recommendation of one of the books uh, that was instrumental in my early prepper uh, awakening, I guess you could call it. And this was the second uh, book that I had read uh, that was uh, sort of a uh, post-nuclear war type book. The first one uh, I did a review on was Alas Babylon, and this one is Malevil. Malevil is, is basically the French version of Alas Babylon. It was written by uh, Robert Merle and published in 1972. Uh, this is the story of a guy named Emmanuel who basically grows up as his uncle's ward. Uh, his uncle owns a big, uh, big ranch, essentially, big, big manor in, in rural France. Uh, and raises horses and grapes, etc. Uh, and on that property is a huge, old, broken down, crumbled castle called uh, Malevil. Now, uh, Emmanuel and his, his buddies play in that castle as kids, and it's always with them uh, as, as a, a common meeting point or a common theme in their growing up. When Emmanuel grows up and inherits his uncle's estates, he restores the castle to its full glory and moves into it and that becomes his his manor house. Now as as you know a, a lot of these stories involve some incredible lucky things uh, and this one is no different. Uh, on the day of the nuclear war uh, Emmanuel and his closest childhood friends uh, are down in the, the basement. They're in the wine cellar uh, pressing the grapes or whatever from the last harvest. Uh, so they're safely tucked, tucked away and without warning, boom, the balloon goes up and the world is involved in thermonuclear war. Uh, they emerge from the wine cellar eventually to find that uh, the the whole countryside is basically scrubbed bare. It's just barren wasteland, something out of Mad Max. Uh, they try to get back on their feet. Luckily, uh, some of their animals had been sheltered, their livestock, and so they've got something to get started with. They've got some seed put aside, and they gradually start to do what they can to first clean up and then get get some wheat in the ground and, and to move on from where they're at. In the meantime, they start to find other survivors. The nearby town of Laroc has survived because of its uh, placement behind a hill or, or, or whatever. Uh, so they, they start to visit with the people of Laroc and strike up trade with them, etc. Uh, <clears throat> what gradually happens in Laroque is uh, the parish priest uh, Fulbert uh, basically declares himself the Bishop of Laroque. Now, this was written in late 60s, early 70s, or about late 60s, early 70s rural France, which is a Catholic nation. And out in the countryside, they would still fall back on a, a lot of those old traditions. Fulbert basically took over leadership of La Roc, uh, and was, in fact, quite corrupt, uh, gradually bringing the whole town under his control, all the supplies, uh, all the division of labor, etc. Um, he then started eyeing uh, Malevil, and stating that, of course, he is the Bishop of Laroc, so he's the Bishop of Malevil. Well, Emmanuel digs through the family Bible or whatever and, and comes up with uh, paperwork supporting uh, Malevil's independence out from under the bishopric of Laroc, and there's a lot of tension there. Okay, perhaps I've dwelt too much on that. That's just one small part of the book. But it's interesting to me because that's a different culture and to see how they, the, the people of Laroc gave legitimacy 
to Fulbert, uh, whereas if this was in some Midwest town, he would have been laughed out, out the door, uh, I think. Well, <clears throat> they're going back and forth, and they're having hard times between the two. And in the meantime, the wheat crop comes up, and this, this starving mob of refugees appears out of nowhere and just throws themselves into the wheat crop, and they're eating it raw. Uh, the retarded man that works for Emmanuel, um, well, they're all yelling and trying to get the people to get out of the crop. And the, the retarded guy who, who works for Emmanuel gets a little bit too excited and starts to pound on, on one of the, um, the refugees uh, who turns on him and, and kills him. I can't remember if it was a knife or, or an axe or something. Kills him instantly. And the reaction of the people of Malieval was to open fire with their rifles and shotguns on the group. Uh, basically wiping it out so they just slaughtered refugees so that brings up the sort of the question uh, geez did they do the right thing but it, it came down to it was their survival uh, above the refugees uh, next enters the the true villain uh, of the story is Vilmaine now Vilmaine is from somewhere else and Vilmaine had a stock of military rifles uh, I can't remember the exact number whether it was 20 or something like that but he had a stock of military rifles based on the time frame of the book I would say that they're most probably MAS 36's French bolt action uh, military rifle and a 3.5 rocket launcher which is commonly known as a bazooka and he has gradually fleshed out his ranks, taking forced conscripts or volunteers along the way. And he's just moving through the countryside until he lights upon uh, Laroque and decides to make that his base of operations. Uh, long story short, you've got the, the partisans of Laroque and the force of Malieval. Uh, the walls of Malieval, the castle against the bazooka, and so it goes, and there is a battle of supremacy, um, which I'll, I'll leave it there, I don't want to spoil the book. Good book, very interesting story, very well fleshed out story. Uh, it does not go too much into the specifics of survival, uh, however, it does get you thinking about different things. I uh, really enjoyed it. I'd recommend it to anyone. It's out of print now, but you may be able to find it on PDF online. Have a read. Uh, enjoy it. Thanks. Stay safe.